Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and this part took me a minute to figure out, so if I pause at all during the beginning, well, at all for this, then just know that I'm basically trying to figure out parts of the story and trying to help make it a bit better. Now then, we will begin. When we last left off, Deku and Intelli had just won against Momo and Todoroki. Deku actually intimidating Todoroki enough, in partly because I want to say Sebastian does have the ability to basically influence people, kind of like Lucifer from that TV show Lucifer, where he does the whole what do you desire trick, and it basically gets people to admit their darkest secrets. It's basically like some form of mind control or brain, like basically brainwashing. But it's more out of intimidation, if not because of certain things. Because the way he uses it in Black Butler, Book of Circus, that's all I'm saying. Now then, let us begin. Deku and everyone is getting on the bus, and people are actually asking Deku questions about why he picked that hero outfit. In fact, why does he even still... Why does he still wear the gloves? Deku would just say that he works as a butler at the Sako residence. So, the fact that even though he does want to become a hero, he also does want to stick close to his master. But he always does want to... He basically always does feel like he does need to at least help people. So, this is another form of it. In fact, his dad is also a butler. People are confused, and some people are shocked, along with Todoroki, just thinking that if Deku is just simply doing this because he wants to stay close to Intelli, then why doesn't his dad just become a hero, or why isn't his dad a hero? People would start asking that question, and Deku would just say that his dad, he didn't become a hero because after some time, he eventually wanted to start a family, which is what he eventually did. He is just lying to them, trying to throw off the fact that his dad has been a demon. Now, along with that, everyone is starting to ask questions, and people are actually asking Momo about her quirk. And that is whenever Aizawa would interrupt them. Now, everyone walks into the USJ, and this is whenever 13 would quite simply give the speech that... With everyone having different quirks and them being unique, quirks can be either very dangerous or very strong, depending on whose hands you put them in. Now, along with that, as soon as that conversation was getting started, this is whenever the villains would arrive. Now, after that, Deku would see this, and Momo, she immediately starts turning on full cowling up to 15%, and she actually asked Aizawa if they can step in and actually help. Aizawa would say no, this is fine, but Intelli would immediately just start loading grenades into her launcher, and she would just begin shooting off smoke, well, knockout gas. Now, as soon as she's firing them off, this is whenever quite a few villains, they are actually falling over and tumbling over. And Mr. Aizawa would actually ask Intelli if he can take that off of her hands for a minute. As he would... She would hand it off. She switches to her other gun, which is her firearm. Basically, it's a... The balls, She's over the years, she's been able to get the balls to the point where they're probably around the size of a... What's the best way to say? Well, not... Hmm. They're probably around the size of... They're smaller than a baseball, about probably half the size. So... They're quite easy to use. Now then, Intelli is actually trying to help by firing some more of these off, knocking out more and more of the villains. They probably knock out probably around half the league as Shigaraki gets annoyed with them, and he actually would tell Kirigiri to teleport them. As soon as they all teleport, Deku is immediately falling through the air as he's looking around. He can see Froppy's already basically diving into the water, 
Yeah. As Ibarra is also... Yeah. Ibarra is basically just trying to make sure she doesn't hit very hard. Deku, he immediately just dives into the water and he actually begins swimming over. He would grab Ibarra and he would actually swim over over to the boat, hopping on. This is whenever Froppy would get on, and she would just say that that was quite... He was swimming pretty fast, as Deku begins wringing out his hair. He does that, and he mops it backwards, as the girls try not to have a nosebleed. Anyways, wanted to do, wanted to do that, just for the simple fact that it would be funny. Also, I, re I remember that Grail fight where Grail nearly lost his shit and had a nosebleed. It was quite hilarious. Now, as he does so, he just says that they really should be getting back to the mainland. As these two go back into focus, they just say that he's right, and this is going to be quite hard to get there. Deku would just say, no, not really. Just, he needs Froppy to basically launch him. Or, if not, he just needs to just jump off. He would just tell them to hold on to him as he would pick them up and he'd immediately jump off the boat. This wouldn't create a big shockwave, but it would at least create one big enough to cause a small tsunami. Basically, at least distract the villains, but not do the whole 100% smash with Deku's finger. Now, as that happened, Deku would get back to the mainland and he immediately just hears the switch in his head as he just starts running off. Everyone would see this as Deku. He arrives right in front of the Nomu and he actually brings up his arm to basically protect Intelli. Deku, he basically gets his arm hit and it actually breaks as Deku goes flying backwards and gets hit through a wall. Now then, everyone's screaming for Deku as he would quite simply just get back up and his arm is very mangled. Now, after that he go charging back in, and until he's actually trying to throw these sticky grenades and these fire grenades, she's basically trying to throw everything she has at the Nomu, along with dodging, and Momo is actually trying to basically aim for some vital points. These two are fighting and stumbling around as Deku gets back into the battle. Aizawa would try erasing the Nomu's quirk, but... He can barely keep his eyes open. Now, ugh. Deku basically keeps coming back in, and the Nomu just keeps attacking and attacking him. Now, it actually is told to go for an Intelli, as Deku can barely hold himself up. Seeing that that boy is basically already at death's door. The Nomu immediately goes to Blitz and actually punch at Intelli, but Deku, he runs in, actually pushing her over as the Nomu, his hand immediately comes down, breaking Deku's back. As Deku immediately starts coughing up blood, and he is actually barely able to hold himself above Intelli. He just asks Intelli to do one simple thing. Can you please close your eyes? Why? What are you doing? Well, I'm going to show off the real me, but... I'd rather not make an impression in front of my master. You may get the wrong idea. Now, can you please tell everyone to close their eyes? As Deku is asking this question, he immediately just starts moving and you can just hear his bones creaking. As he stands back up, actually starting to pop everything back into place as his arm begins healing and untwisting. Everyone is in shock as Intelli just starts shouting for everyone to close their eyes. <sighs> now then, as everyone begins closing their eyes, there is a sudden ring of darkness. Deku brings his finger up, pulling off his glove, saying that you have really pissed him off. The fact that he has had to go so far as to ask and request something from his master just shows off how much you have annoyed me. Now then, as the entire...
entirety of the area around them is encased, blocking out the sun. As all you hear is a little clatter, or what sounds like heels dropping to the ground. Now, this is when Deku shows off a transformation, and Shigaraki and the rest of the League of Villains begin screaming. Deku, he immediately just blitzes and takes out the rest of the villains as Aizawa is trying to open his eyes. As he does so, he immediately just feels something come onto his face as Deku tells Aizawa that he needs to please keep his eyes closed. This form he is in is dreadful, it is eerie, and it is quite simply repulsive, along with just being straight up disgusting. Now then, allow me to take out the Nomu. As Deku immediately blitzes it, you can just hear the sound of something tearing into it and tearing through it. As Deku, he is doing so and he just keeps going. Further and further and further. Everyone, they open their eyes hearing everything, but even they can't see through this darkness. Deku's ripping through it and all you hear is the sound of things collapsing, bones breaking and snapping along with repeated, just loud thumps, over and over and over again. As that is happening, back at the manor, Sebastian immediately just feels what's going on. As he immediately tells Inko that he will be right back. Something is going on at... I'm not... I do believe Deku just transformed. As Sebastian runs out the door, and immediately just starts heading straight for the USJ transforming into a raven, and flying as fast as he can. At the same time, there is a man sitting at the top of the USJ. He is very annoyed. Oh dearie me. I thought he'd be reaping souls at this hour already, but it seems like that boy's quirk. It's quite annoying. Wait a minute. As he begins trying to look closer at it and looks at his list. Izuku Midoriya. Special case. If anything goes wrong today, this will be the boy's fault. Huh, that's weird. The only reason we get those is because of... Wait a minute, that's what that smell is. As we will cut back to Deku just ripping and tearing through the Nomu. He eventually does kill it but he was having a bit of fun. As he would revert back, no, All Might immediately just blasts through the door as he just shouts that he is here, and through the darkness, all you see is Deku's glowing eyes. As he untransforms, and all the darkness around him just immediately starts fading back in. Now then, this is whenever there is a crow sitting right outside. In fact, it has flown in, and it is actually circling the area. Grail spots this, and he finds it weird, as Deku is looking up. The darkness immediately fades, and all you see around Deku is a pile of blood, and bits and pieces of the Nomu. A bit too many pieces. Then it should be even possible. All Might would immediately run in asking Midoriya if he's okay, and Deku would just say that he is quite alright, but he cannot say the same for them over there, as the villains are just stuck there, they're just frozen in fear, asking exactly what that was, he couldn't even see. That boy's stronger than All Might. Ah, <sighs> no, no I am not. You see, I'm quite simply just... As Intelli would cut out, cut Deku off, saying, One hell of a butler. Yes, I know. Now, that is whenever Grail, he's looking more closely at this boy, and Deku just immediately just mops his hair back. As Grail is immediately just thinking that this boy looks like Sebastian. But that can't be possible, right? Ah, well, I see you have met my son, or you've quite simply just seen him. Grail turns around, actually going to swing his chainsaw, and this is whenever Sebastian just catches it in his hand. 
Saying that, that is quite rude. I've not seen you for quite some time, Grail. Oh, Bassie, you're back. Ah, it was getting quite annoying. How long has it been? Ah, uh, not long enough. So, they have you reaping souls in here, in this area now. Why, yes, actually. Ironically enough, I'm not the only one who breaks the rules a little bit. Your little murder spree's been solved, and it was one of our guys, so I'm taking over for him. <sighs> yes, quite dreary. Such a shame, really. I could have gone another century without seeing you. Oh, Bassie, you're so annoying. But, I do have one question. He immediately just points down, saying, Who the hell is that? Ah, oh, I did tell you that is my son. Biological? Oh, Bassie, you've been cheating on me. Grail, we were never a couple. Besides, I do find you pretty repulsive. Oh, you'll come to love me sometime, Bassie. I am not doing that again. That is very hard to maintain without laughing. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. For those of you who are probably cringing right now, so am I. Okay. Anyways. Deku, he's walking over and he's actually asking Momo and Intelli if they are both okay as he is slipping back on his gloves. Now, as he's doing so, they are somewhat confused as everyone's running over and people are actually talking about what just happened. Everyone is leaving for the USJ, or leaving the USJ, and this is whenever Bakugo and Todoroki, these two, they both couldn't see anything in the darkness, but through the fire they were able to see what seemed like ash falling from the sky. But when they look down at the ground, they actually see that it's feathers. They would both pick these up, and they're quite curious about them. These are far bigger than that bird they saw earlier. Even then, Deku transforming. What is that all about? If his quirk is classified as a transformation quirk, then this just adds a little another layer to mystery. But at least that explains why Zawa can cancel it. Now then, Deku, he is actually trying to tidy up his outfit, but finding that all the blood stains and all the holes through it, those are going to be annoying. Now then, All Might would actually pull them both aside to explain everything as Aizawa is getting medical attention. And our dogs are barking again. <sighs> anyways. I'll just check that in recording. Now then, anyways. As Aizawa gets healed, he would stand up asking exactly what that what that was. Deku would have to explain that with his quirk being so versatile, he can transform into his real form. If not what he calls his advanced mode. That is way too loud. Anyways, Deku would go on saying that the the form he does take on, his dad taught him how to repress it. But it is very, very repulsive to, to most people. This is whenever Todoroki would actually walk up. Basically, joining the conversation, asking, so these little... These feathers, as he holds one up, are part of your transformation, correct? Ah, uh, well, yes. Along with that sound, what were those? Heels? Um, well, they were... I believe they were boots, actually. You don't know? Well, I don't want to say heels, because those things, from what I've heard, are hard to wear. And Telly and Momo are immediately just trying not to laugh, as Todoroki walks away. Now then, All Might would want to talk with Deku, but Sebastian would, would immediately just pull Deku aside, saying that he encased the entire area in darkness, correct? Yes. Yes, I did, Father. <sighs> okay, good. You cannot have your young master see you like that. 
It it ruins the butler's appearance in front of their master. Yes, father, I know. I did ask her to close her eyes, just as instructed. Oh, good. We would not like to make a bad impression, now, would we? No, we would not, father. Did everyone close their eyes? I believe so, but I did make the darkness especially hard to see through. But the eyes and the fact that the door busted open almost gave me away. Okay, well, I do believe at least your little outburst, as Sebastian would say, with air quotations, it actually did help our case. Really? How? As Grill walks up saying that, oh, he is an old friend of Bassie's. In fact, he's quite fun. And Telly walks up as Deku and Sebastian are both twitching. Their eyebrows are twitching, and you can see that both of them just want to punch Grail. Now, she just asks who that is, and this is whenever Sebastian had to go on explaining that this is Grail, and he is a Reaper. So, why were you even here today? Well, Bassy, aside from my new role as the Reaper for this sec well, for this town. I also was told and instructed that I had many souls to reap here. In fact, I believe Toshinori was on the list. Who's Toshinori? Ah, well, I do believe you guys call him All Might. <sighs> Hero names are so difficult with the human names. It just adds on an extra layer of paperwork. Now, that is going to be very annoying. They would go back to class, and Aizawa would announce that they have two weeks off to prepare for the sports festival. As Deku and Sebastian are both heading home with Intelli, this is going to be hard to explain to Inko as to who this flamboyant man in red is. Now then, that is where I'm going to be leaving things off of, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and yes, I did bring Grail into the series. Someone did ask if I was bringing in other creatures, like demons, or angels, or the reapers. And I actually was planning on bringing Grail in around... I was going to bring him in around the end of the series, but I realized with the USJ, there would be quite a bit of names on the list to reap, basically take, because everyone was supposed to die. In fact, I do believe without All Might's 1 million percent, he actually would have died against the Nomu. Now then, that being said, I am going to leave this part off here, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and have an amazing day. I hope you all enjoyed.